Welcome back. One of the many things that's changed in the 20 years since the terrorist attacks on 9-11 is our overall national psyche. In short, Americans are more pessimistic and divided two decades after 9-11. Take a look at these historical numbers from our NBC News poll. Before the 9-11 attacks, which was just months after a very acrimonious presidential election that ended in a Supreme Court decision, Americans were actually fairly optimistic about the direction of the country. More Americans felt that the country was on the right track than on the wrong track. After the attacks, the country was even more unified against a common enemy. 72% in our poll felt the country was on the right track. But now, as the country is in the midst of a deadly pandemic that's divided Americans over issues like masks and vaccines, just 29% think the country is headed in the right direction. A majority of Americans now think we are on the wrong track. COVID, as well as everything else over the last 20 years, has torn this nation apart. So joining me now is a former House Majority and Minority Leader, former Missouri Democratic Congressman Dick Capart. He was the Minority Leader on September 11th, 2001. In fact, before we get to today's interview, here's what Dick Capart said on September 12th, 2001. I believe this is a time for us to pull together as a Congress and a country. I told the president today in the meeting that we were with him and behind him and that we would trust him and we wanted him to trust us in acting to solve this problem and to reassure our people. Well, Congressman Gephardt, uh, I have to tell you, I don't <laughs> imagine uh, I would hear Kevin McCarthy say something like that in the wake of something <laughs> like this today. How far off the rails are our politics? Pretty far, Chuck. Um, we shouldn't be, but we are for a lot of different reasons. Uh, I think a lot of it is the information culture in America today, which is uh, pretty bitterly divided the American people. And you've got to always remember that Congress is a reflection of the American people. If the American people are divided, Congress is going to be pretty divided. But it's also a test of leadership. I've always believed that public service, and that's really what you do when you run for these jobs, you're a public servant. You should always put country over party and country mm -hmm. over self. And that's what we did after 9-11. Here's the part that I think what I have to remind folks that maybe not, are not aware of what our politics was like between 1997 and 2000, in September 11th, 2001, we had an impeachment that divided this country. We had that 2000 presidential election that went to the Supreme Court. Um, that uh, to this day that has divided the country. In many ways, uh, a more legitimate set of anger over an election result than the phoniness that, that Donald Trump has created with the January 6th insurrection. And yet, you had, I, I'm sure you had members of your own caucus that hated Bush, just hated him, had this anger to him uh, on this. And I'm sure there were Republicans that still were angry over the Clinton impeachment and still angry over this. How did that not surface itself in those first year or two after 9-11? It did, Chuck, after 9-11. I had a lot of Democrats saying, uh, we ought to blame this on Bush. This was his fault. He's president. The buck stops there. He missed all the opportunities to know what was going to happen. And I said, no, we're not going to do that. This is everybody's fault. In fact, I think I gave a, a floor speech in which I said, you know, people are blaming the CIA, they're blaming the president, they're blaming the FBI, whatever. I said, no, it's all of our fault. We're all responsible. We had plenty of ideas and plenty of indicators that this could happen. We had an attack on the World Trade Center in 1993 that failed. We had Kobar Towers in Saudi Arabia. We had three embassies blow up in Africa, kill a lot of American personnel. We were all asleep at the switch. We failed in our responsibility, our most important responsibility. And that's what people have to know and have to say. Just respect your adversaries, respect the people on the other side of the aisle, respect mm -hmm. the president, and try to do the job for the American people. You're a public servant. You know, it, it just seems so logical and obvious uh, and yet that is not where we are. I mean, I, and it, it's interesting, you blame the information ecosystem. Uh, it, how much of this really is on, on Trump? Because I think about 2000 and that election. Had Al Gore said this was unfair and never conceded, do you think the country could have unified after 9-11? 
Yeah, I, I think there's something to that. I really do. Uh, you know, President Trump really took us into a different direction than we've been in the modern era. He was very assertive and aggressive and, and, and really, you know, played into people's hatreds and, mm -hmm. and their, their grievances. And so he exacerbated what always goes on in our political system. Look, democracy is a substitute for violence. That's what it is. It's a very tough process we go through. But as Churchill said, it's the worst form of government on earth except for all the others. And he was right. We have to preserve this precious democracy that we were handed by our ancestors and by our fathers and mothers. And if, if we just hate one yeah. another, if half the people hate the other half and vice versa, we're not going to have a democracy. You can't. It won't work. Let me get to one other part of the early days of unity, and that is, was it too unified? Meaning, it was very difficult to criticize some of the strategies, whether it was Iraq or Afghanistan, without being called unpatriotic or un-American. And it seemed as if, I mean, I don't think Barbara Lee was alone in voting the way, the way she voted, but she was the only one that felt comfortable getting, going public with it. How, how much did we trample public debate a little bit? Well, it's a good point. And uh, I've thought a lot about it. In fact, uh, my support of the Iraq war was the uh, biggest mistake I made in my public life. And I regret it to this day. Every time I see a, a soldier, I used to go out to Walter Reed and meet the young soldiers yeah. coming back with their legs blown off, their eyes blown out. And believe me, if you think you're responsible for that, it, it, you carry it for the rest of your life. After 9-11, we used to have meetings in the Oval Office with George Bush, the four leaders, every week, Tuesday morning, 7 a.m. Yep. And after a few months, he started talking about doing something about Iraq, Saddam Hussein. And I said, Mr. President, if this is just about getting rid of Saddam Hussein, I'm not for it. But if you really believe and our uh, uh, intelligence people really believe he has the beginnings of nuclear weapons or weapons of mass destruction, then I'll, I'll consider it. And so I went out to the CIA myself three or four times, talked to everybody out there and asked them all the hard questions. I said, look, I have to justify this to people in St. Louis if I yep. vote for this. And they said he absolutely has these weapons or he's getting these weapons. And I voted for him. We were, we were mistaken. George yeah. Bush was mistaken. It was another mistake. But what was made honestly with the right intent, I'm sorry we did it. I would never do it if I had known what I know now. Former Congressman Dick Eppart, longtime Democrat from Missouri. Uh, it's good to have you on the air. Good to get your perspective. And I'm glad to see that uh, 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 everything looks healthy and you look good. Thanks for visiting. Thanks, Chuck. Same to you.